Good morning. Good morning and uh, welcome this morning to Peace Through the Word. Uh, again, the daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona. And uh, coming to you from my study at uh, Sun City, Oro Valley, Arizona in Tucson. And I'm Pastor Ron York at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church. Elvis Carrera, good to see you chiming in early this morning. From Lima, Peru, I thank you, my brother, so very, very much, and it's very much appreciated. Uh, again, coming to you at an early hour, as I am right at, you know, in a class uh, with Dr. Uh, uh, Masaki from Concordia uh -huh. Theological Seminary in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And it's an incredible class that I'm taking. Uh -huh. And I enjoy it immensely. And so uh, I have to be there in about an hour and a half or so. So I bring this broadcast to you early uh, today and tomorrow. And I thank you for your accommodation. Brothers and sisters, this morning our devotional, Dr. Meyer, who was my president at the seminary that I graduated from, was Concordia Seminary St. Louis. And it's one of the one of the top thirty seven seminaries within the world, uh, known for its academic excellence. And he was the president when I was there, Doctor Meyer. And this morning we're using his devotionals. And this morning he's going to talk about crossing the line. And <coughs> so he's going to share with us <coughs> what line is that, and then how and why do we cross it. <laughs> So I pray that it's going to bless us, inspire us, encourage us, and give us genuine real peace as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wearing a sweater today, uh, we had a system come through that dropped the temperature significantly here in southern Arizona to the point where, <laughs> where they put out some freeze warnings. So the desert gets cold, and that's one of the neat things of, and the mysterious things about the desert. It's hot, but it can also get you get get cold too. Uh, it has its own personality, which I love. I love the Sonoran Desert. To me, it's the most beautiful desert there is. I like the Sonoran Desert first, the Mojave second, probably the Sahara third. But you all are saying, you know, what do we care? <laughs> but it's okay. It's all good. I love the desert. I do. And I hope that you guys like where, you know, the, the different parts of the world in which you're living and so on and so forth. I really do. It's a, it's a wonderful blessing. So anyway, we're here to talk about Jesus and, and well, that's really kind of Jesus too. But anyway, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy God, Holy and Most Gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. And so, brothers and sisters, this morning, let's together begin our time by praying the Lord's Prayer. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this morning we do want to profess the Christian faith that is so beautifully expressed in the Apostles' Creed. And if you if you have never learned that, my encouragement to you would be to uh, memorize it if you can. Get a copy of it. Uh, you can download it. Just go, you know, Apostles' Creed, and it'll pop up, and and you can download it. and And I would encourage you to memorize it. And the reason being. It's because you never know what situations you might be in. And this happened to me personally, even as a pastor. And maybe you get scared, you get frightened, you get you get worried, you get concerned, you get and your emotions start going nuts, you know. And it's nice to reflect on that, you know, to, to be able to recite it in the Lord's Prayer. It's comforting. It it and it's therapeutic. 
And so I, I really think it'll bless you, you know. So anyway, together, let's profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, this morning uh, our devotional is going to unpack, Dr. Meyer is going to unpack for us the passage of Scripture of uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 9, going down through verse 17. And so we have this account, and I pray that it is going to bless you. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. There's a lot being said in just those few words there, but we'll continue. Uh, that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God in the day of visitation. Be subject to the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, but not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the emperor. So let's see how Dr. Meyer uh, unpacks that for us uh, this morning in his devotional. He says this. He says, um, how is it with you and Jesus? So he starts out with a question. His ministry just launched in Capernaum. Jesus now travels throughout Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. A leper comes up and asks him to be healed. Healed. That was wrong on many counts, at least by the rules of that time. Lepers were outcasts, not supposed to approach normal people. No bother to this leper. This untouchable crosses the line, kneels right before Jesus and says, If you will, you can make me clean. That's in St. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. So, do you cross the lines to go to Jesus? You know, it may not be politically correct. So do you not cross the line then, if it's not? Conventional wisdom tells us, tells us what lines not to cross. Don't talk about your church with people at work. You know, don't bring Christian morality into office intrigues. Oh, you can believe in Jesus, just be private and personal about that. You know, I've, I, I think I've told you, I, I've, I've had people tell me, we don't want your religious uh, ideas and words expressed in political conversation. They've told me that direct, those exact words. Um, and if that's what you do, then how is it with you and Jesus, really? I mean, if we succumb to that. So moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Jesus himself crosses the line. The clean touches the unclean. The son of God touches a hurting brother or a hurting sister. Um, so do you know his touch? 
When you kneel at the communion table, do you know that you have been restored to community? Unclean made clean because Jesus willed your deliverance. How is it with you and Jesus? Again, the question. Cleansed cross the line to go to places dominated by conventional wisdom. First, go. Let words of witness follow your presence. Jesus told the leper, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. Jesus tells you, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. God's word for us today in a tremendous way to be able to cross the lines that get erected for us. So let's pray. Dear Lord, pray that you will help us to cross whatever lines come before us for the furtherance of your gospel and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray that will bless you and inspire you and encourage you in tremendous ways this morning. And thank you very much. So we cry to you, O Lord, in the morning our prayers come before you. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Every day we will bless you and we will praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems your life from the pit, and he crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord, let our cries come to you, and let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, again, thank you so much for chiming in. Elvis Cadetta and Arthur Fennell, thank you both and others that are chiming in and others may later on during the morning. Thank you so very, very much for being a part of this ministry. It's so appreciated. So it is a beautiful day here. It's cold, though, cool. And so I just encourage all of you to go out and enjoy the blessings of the Lord, the Lord in abundance. Serve him as he gives you those wonderful opportunities. Flaps have been retracted, and so I conveyed all of you tremendous blue skies. <laughs>